This episode was brought to you by Mialamu Security, who are a Pacific Island family business with over 20 years experience in security. They provide the expertise to manage all your security needs and specialize in cost-effective, round-the-clock security services across Auckland and beyond. They tailor security solutions that are right for your business and events. Get in touch with them today to find out more on their website, that's mialamusecurity.nz, or email lukem at mialamusecurity.nz. They've got you covered 100%. I have to do it in segments because, girl, I don't know if we can get all your life all in one hour. Uh, <laughs> oh, so cute. You guys are so cute. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, just juggling with these ones. I just uh, find it hard to do anything without. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. <laughs> keeping it raw, keeping it real. <laughs> this queen multitasker. No, I'm I'm failing miserably. <laughs> I'm failing really well. <laughs> I forgot. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. <laughs> we have like, to tell it to each other, right? <laughs> you know, if no one's gonna tell us, well, you might as well tell each other. <laughs> we know our worth, even if we have to tell ourselves. It. <laughs> exactly. Oh, you look amazing. I was like, oh, I wonder if I had time for the makeup, but anyway. <laughs> Girl, you don't even need makeup. Look at you. You're just stunning. You're stunning. <laughs> But um, I'm, I'm so happy to see you. I know, amazing, amazing, amazing. Finally, can't believe it. Finally, Finally. sister. Oh man, fell on with sick kids and everything, right? Because you know what? Like p- people probably think that you're this perfect person, you know? Like because oh, you're, no. you know, because on TV you look amazing and you just look so calm and poised. You know, and people don't realize, like, your mom, first and foremost. Real life is, it's not what you're seeing on TV, studio, there's no kids around, someone's helped me with my makeup for an hour. And, you know, you're, you're representing a team of you know, incredible uh, colleagues behind you that have, that have put this show together. So it's just the last part of, of uh, you know, everyone's mahi, really. Nothing really like real life. <laughs> Which is what this podcast is about, in a way, isn't it? You know? Girl, yes. Real, real. You know, I've been dying to get you on, girl, you know. <laughs> <laughs> my pleasure, my sister. Always my pleasure. So what, what's your schedule like for, for the day? Well, I've got two little preschoolers, two little boys. One is two and one is four. And so they're at home with me right now. So mm. if you see them, they'll probably pop in and out. <laughs> totally get it. My son's off as well. I was like, thank you. Because he had a bit of a runny nose and I was like, you're all right, you're all right. <laughs> I was like, you're not staying home, man. I'll, I'll wait until the teacher calls if I have to pick you up, but you're going to school. <laughs> this is one of the youngest. Say hello. Yes. Hi, Auntie. Oh, hi. hi again. <laughs> but I really wanted to elaborate more about your journey. Like, what was it like for you growing up? My mum is, uh, you know, full Pakeha New Zealander. And she went to Samoa, was a nurse, and she was, you know, really wanted to just go and uh, volunteer in the islands. So she went to Samoa in the early 70s, 1970s. My dad had been a scholarship student after that, working in Samoa. So he was an outboard motor mechanic. They met, and I think about within a month, they decided they were going to get married. And a few months later, my dad was on a boat to New Zealand and uh, came to New Zealand and... Ah and lived in Dunedin. That's where we uh, grew up because that's where my my mum's family are from. So with not many Pacific people, you, you learn to, and also being, uh, you know, bicultural as well, you learn to walk in both worlds. Um, mm. And it's just, it's just part of life. Um, come to Auckland when I was, uh, I think for my first job at Radio 531 VI. As an announcer, it was incredible. I was just like, <laughs> full blast experience with the mm. Pacific culture and, you know, Buster Bigger Festival, everything, Bolly Fest. And um, I think I was arriving at the Otara markets, Mangani markets every weekend from, from Westside and soaking yes. it all up, honestly. Socials up your way Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night. <laughs> Girl. we see on Friday, Saturday night. <laughs> We're going <laughs> in. We're going in. <laughs> <laughs> then, then turn up on the radio uh, presenting the gospel show on Sunday morning. <laughs> so it's awesome. And also being at Radio 531 PI is my first uh, job in the industry. is honestly so cool. Like, mm. honestly, it's such an amazing community. Like, I think it was Thursday night was the Cook Island night and they'd turn up, they'd prepare, like, honestly, three trellis tables of kai to help them do the all night. And they were like, come, come, marama, come. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah. 
you know, Salah Sally Newsham, uh, who used to run all the wonderful Miss Samoas back in the day, and she was yeah. on air as well, and all these incredible pioneers for our Pacifica broadcasting um, here in Aukilani. It's just um, an incredible way, I think, to begin my career. So, yeah, that that's where it really started for me. Um, and also, you know, I didn't grow up around a lot of my Tuvalu cousins because just no, hardly any Tuvaluans in Dunedin. Um, we went to a Samoan law to the afternoon uh, Samoan language church service. So I grew up with, with that kind of influence as well. I feel really blessed to have quite a rich experience in terms of culture and really um, knowing who I am on, on both my, my sides as well. Is journalism something that you grew up wanting to do? Or is it something that just kind of fell into place? There was, I think, something always in my heart to be involved in, you know, sharing our Pacific stories or in broadcasting. And I've told the story before, but my my mum tells me that when I was five, I looked up to the television and said, um, I want to do that job one day. It was um, Māori woman uh, newsreader, a pioneer, and her name was Marama Martin. And... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's something I think when you see yourself represented on TV or someone who looks like you, um, it's so important in terms of um, representation or, or seeing people who look like us in the mainstream. Mm -hmm. um, and that's been really important to me as well, um, just to be there to represent for other Pacific or Polynesian women or, or young people to see someone who looks like them on screen. Beautiful. Um, yes. Yeah, I mean, otherwise... Yeah, it can still feel quite monoculture, I think. But, you know, there's been some incredible um, changes in the industry, which is exciting to see. The first time, actually, I met you was, um, I think you were doing a bit of acting. With uh, oh, Kelly Cook, that's going back in the day, yeah. That's oh, my girl. gosh. I love um, acting and performing. And so oh. I I met the, the incredible crew and they were putting together a show. And honestly, it's so inspiring seeing the original guys from that crew, like they're still going hard, like Vela mm. Manutautia, Anna, Anna Bella Boladay Vow, Stacey Leilua, Lenny, yeah. um, Jink Glenn Jackson still representing oh. and and involved in New Wear. Yeah. And you know, all of these guys are like real incredible contributors to our Pacific theatre scene. Um, really, really proud of them for what they're still doing within the scene um, mm. and privileged to have been part of something at, at that time as well, which was amazing that's mm. the thing Asus. like you know back in those days i remember you coming to the markets remember those days Mangere 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 Mangere? Mangere? yeah i've come and buy your t-shirts girl <laughs> honestly <laughs> yes right and i used to sit down with you and i remember talking to you for ages just saying man you you would so look good on tv i remember telling oh, you that wow awesome experience yes yeah oh my gosh thank you sis for your encouragement really oh, appreciate oh. it yeah but look at you now girl like what has it been like for you now like do you find yourself a lot more confident with what you're doing? And is there a difference between radio or being on TV? Because like when I get when I go on the show, like when you invited me on the show, I was just so nervous. Our skills that we have naturally as bus freak in terms of storytellers, connecting, um, those are the skills which are needed anyway in television. And and I think the the skill set I developed from radio broadcasting was uh, really the foundation for what I'm doing in, in TV. And of course, you know, there's a jump in having to learn other different things as well, but I really do, I really am grateful for the background and experience that I had from from working in radio before I came to TV. And I was really nervous to make the jump because um, I think I've been working in radio for, for a little while and I did want to make the jump across to TV as well um, mm. but I just thought I wasn't ready or I wasn't I didn't have enough skills to be able to, to make that jump so I was mm. so nervous and actually it was a redundancy I was made redundant from a role that I had in radio that um, pushed me out into television and it's so funny how you know I always think you know sometimes redundancy is is one of the best things that can happen to you to to push you out into um, out of your comfort zone so then I was forced to in a way I was like okay I'm ready I'm ready I can come mm. that was just awesome it just gave me the courage to to step out and across and I started off in uh, 
I did some work for Pacific Beat Street for a while. Oh my Sammy, god. Sammy, that's it, Corinne. Um yes. Tuki Lao Mia was involved in oh the um uh, in the show. Oh, there's so many awesome people. Mm -hmm. Sam Wolfram was of course the, the producer and there was a lot of other Pacifica people involved. And then I went to Tangata Pacifica, um, started off as a reporter director. And I haven't left, so I'm still there. It's such a, an a, it's an incredible show to be involved in, you know, it's um our first Pacifica program. It's actually celebrating 35 oh. years this yeah. April, I believe. So, wow. um, yeah, it's a real privilege to be involved in, in, in the program as well. Mm.